Hey all, Rob here. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when future videos are out. And in this video, I thought instead of making a post, I want to talk about it because it involves the toy industry and Marvel toys and what we collect as fans. And I had this, and this will probably be news to you as it was to me, because I had no idea that this was actually going on. And basically what that is, is the social justice, or we could say the woke agenda, is actually affecting Marvel toys in terms of what companies can make, what they have to put on the shelf, and it's not selling. The push for this female action figures and these lesser tier properties like Eternals does not sell. And the retailers do not like it. They are losing money and it's not going well. What I'm going to talk about is an article from Cosmic Book dot news and an article at that marketplace dot com and I will also make commentary myself as I am talking about the video and what I am quoting in these articles and first of all the title here is woke Marvel Star Wars huge Disney busts confirms merchandise sales. Kevin Feige's woke approach is not only failing at the box office and on Disney Plus, but with merchandise as well. So let's get into it here. Marvel's approach is again proving to be a failure, this time confirmed by merchandise sales, which also includes Lucasfilm and Star Wars. And first of all, I would like to point out, guys, and gals if you're if you're listening to this what I'm going to be mentioning and we're going to have an insider is that these are numbers these are facts it's not opinion that this stuff is not selling what I'm going to be mentioning it's not your theory or your opinion but these are facts by people with boots on the ground in the retail stores and the merchandise numbers so this is statistical evidence this isn't theory or speculation or your opinion that it's not selling. No, it is fact. It is not selling, okay? There's a huge difference. So again, not theory. Fact. This stuff is not selling. Let's get to it. We know about The Last Jedi and its con consumer products division and now it's happening at Marvel. Marvel is failing to deliver for Disney Plus and on the big screen, and a Toy Insider offers a look into Marvel merchandise sales, proving Woke Marvel is a huge bust. It all started with Captain Marvel. Well, I would disagree with the article. It started before Captain Marvel, with all the race flipping and the swapping going on. I would say it happened before Captain Marvel. But I think the Captain Marvel movie with Brie Lawson, because she is so unlikable. The Black Widow movie, which was a feminist appeal, if you watched it, and the female Taskmaster, which nobody liked, is the worst performing Marvel movie at the box office. In a way, though, with the whole the COVID crisis, you know, I, I personally think that was a factor. So to say it's the worst, you'd have to, in my opinion, there were other factors involved. How many how many movies were out around that time that performed well? Not many, so I, I don't know. I disagree with the article there a bit. Shang-Chi, which wasn't a bad movie. It's probably the, the best Phase 4 one that they made. But it sold 
kind of low in the South Korea and the Asian audiences. So the Asian audiences were not fans of Shang-Chi. Eternals, the gender swapped mask, it was the worst selling of the Marvel merchandise, which we'll get to a little later in the article. And Doctor Strange was a letdown, uh, considering that it should have done better. And Thor could have done better as well. You had a, a woke Marvel producer say that X-Men is outdated simply because it contains the word men in it. And the reason I point that out is you have to understand where the people in charge at Disney and the toys are taking this, okay? And this was a good part I want to read to you. So typically what happens is that characters and stories are changed to fulfill a, an agenda which sees said characters and stories sacrificed in order for that agenda to fit, where a new character makes the original look bad, such as Rey making Luke Skywalker look bad. That's woke. That's what the article says. And, you know, that's a good, that's something good to remember. I just thought of that, you know, when, when I read it. When you see a new character introduced and it makes an original character look bad, you know, there's an agenda there, okay? Okay, now we're going to get to it. The Disney Consumer Products Revenue. It was so bad that Disney changed how it reports merchandise in its quarterly investor reports as the company combines Consumer Products Division with its Parks Division. What it does is it hides the losses from merchandise and it makes it appear as if both divisions are successful when what is going on is that the success of the Parks Division offsets the low revenue of the Consumer Products Division. So you see they're hiding it. So what's going on? If fans are not buying it, it means they don't like it, which is us, right? Earlier, it was reported that Marvel has been failing to deliver for Disney+, Plus, as Business Insider said, that they're not increasing the subscriber numbers. They're not bringing in new customers. Marvel isn't doing anything for Disney+, Plus in terms of ratings. The Phase 4 is not being well-received. It's the lowest phase of all the Marvel films. And let's get to this. The insider blows the door off Marvel merchandise on That Park Place, the website. And check this out. It reveals only Spider-Man merchandise is really selling. And that Captain America and Iron Man are the big sellers behind that. But none of Phase 4 is selling. This actually goes with what I read in the 1980s. In the 1980s, Jim Shooter, who was the editor-in-chief of Marvel, said he saw the merchandise numbers and that Spider-Man far outsold all the other Marvel heroes combined. In other words, Spider-Man outsold everyone else in the company merchandise-wise. And now I'm reading right here. This is four decades later plus. Spider-Man really sells. Captain America and Iron Man are big, and you could kind of flip it. In other countries, it's Iron Man, then it's Captain America. So they're number two and three. And number four and number five are Thor and the Hulk. They are the only five selling heroes. Spider-Man number one, easily at the top. Captain America and Iron Man, you could flip those two spots. And Thor and the Hulk, and you can flip those two spots. But here is what is happening. Female characters don't make money. But they, meaning Disney, mandates retailers to sell them anyway. Did you notice the Riva Star Wars that her HasLab project failed? And I can tell you this, her unlikable character it will be in the store shelves, not sold out. You will find that figure very easily. Furthermore, this was huge here. With no new Star Wars movies planned currently, that is hurting the brand. 
it says, toy companies, the people who hold the license rights, have mandates from companies operating in huge consumer categories, such as princesses uh, are doing fine for the license holders, you know, for the girls, no issues. But Lucasfilm is a disaster. The new characters have no consumer pull. And even worse, classic characters are seeing diminishing returns. And check this out. Look at this quote, okay? And this stood out to me. So check this out. If it ain't selling, Walmart doesn't want your dead plastic garment or whatever. Also, that the brand is no longer a theatrical brand didn't go well with business partners. Did you hear that, man? It means if you don't have a movie, Disney Plus is not cutting it. People who are the big money makers, the big companies, they don't like the fact that there is no new Star Wars movie. Marvel merchandise down 50%. Marvel is down 50% in the number of units sold and down 30% in dollars. And Eternals is the worst, it said. The new stuff is failing to generate level 2 and level 3 interest that brings in the big money. It says right here, Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man are holding everything together at this point. Eternals was the worst. And here is the general statement. Female heroes do not sell merchandise. This is where we're going into woke and into the social justice territory. The insider gives an example of female representation. If you're going to ship plastic cups to Marvel, the ideal mix would be Captain America, I mean, it would be Spider-Man, Cap, Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor, but Marvel would ask for 50% female representation, even though they don't sell. And remember this, it links. Todd McFarlane had stated on McFarlane Toys, female characters don't sell. Of course, Marvel would ask for 50% female representation. But they also ask for representation of these lower brands, like Shang-Chi, like Eternals. What is happening is, let's say you want to make a Spider-Man or a Captain America, the rights holder, Marvel, will say, if you want to make a Spider-Man, a Captain America, a Hulk, you must have a Kamala Khan action figure. You must have a Eternals action figure. You must have a Shang-Chi action figure. And, and you know it doesn't sell. Spider-Man will sell. Captain America will sell. If you're the retailer and you don't want Eternals or Shang-Chi or any of this, then Marvel will say, no, then you can't make the toy. See, you, you have to make uh, what we're telling you. You have to put this female figure in there. You must put this Eternals character in there. You must put this on your store shelf or we give you nothing. Eternals was Marvel's worst film at the box office. And Marvel mandated retailers sell the same amount of Eternals merchandise as they would classic Marvel heroes. And that led to stores having a big loss because it wasn't selling. Marvel Disney Plus doesn't register with consumers. Even Wall Street said it. Virtually none of the purely TV characters Register with consumers, virtually none, for merchandise purposes. And check this out, like I told you and like I believed. The Falcon playing as Captain America, his Captain America does not sell. People are more interested in buying the Falcon action figures of the actual Falcon. That's right. Cap Falcon does not sell. That's not me saying it. That's the insider saying it. Marvel and management knows these decisions are impacting merchandise. 
but they don't care. Marvel is pushing Falcon, Shang-Chi, and any female character as much as Spider-Man, Captain America, or Iron Man. And, that, and those figures are not selling, okay? And the Star Wars is not selling. Basically, any of the new Star Wars characters compared to the classic heroes and villains, the new stuff is not registering. The, the High Republic is not selling. All that woke garbage, no interest. Remember what I said here about the new stuff is not catching the, the buying interest compared to the old stuff? I can pretty much guarantee you any any New Republic or High Republic crap is not going to sell, okay? So, this is why the store shelves are getting full. If Marvel wants 50% female representation, even if you cut it down to 25, and this is what it says here. You could, let's say you've got Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Captain America. They want Thor and the Hulk out and replace those slots with, let's say, Wanda and the Black Widow. The problem is, characters like Thor and the Hulk outsell the Black Widow and Wanda 8 to 1 or more. Male heroes sell and ship in more case packs, and the female heroes back up the shelves and are not sold. And it goes here. This is not a new fad, okay? Bob Iger, the Disney top guy back then, he thought that Ray would sell just as many toys as Luke Skywalker, but that Ray would also sell the girls. In the end, Ray sold poorly for both genders. It goes here. Perhaps it's not an ideal world that you wish to live in, but the reality is little boys want to play with action figures that they could role play as their most heroic selves. That means boys want to dream of being male superheroes. And girls, given the option to play with masculine, masculine female heroes, they often choose to play with more feminine or maternal toys like Barbie. Maybe you think that's wrong or bad, but that's the reality we live in. That's what the article says. You know, and this is the bottom line, okay? Uh, and I'm talking to you here. There's me here. Not the article. The McFarlane has proven it. And merchandise here has proven it. Female action figures don't sell in big numbers. The male heroes sell, okay? Let's say 8 to 1. 20 to 1. Whatever it is. But at least a minimal of 8 to 1. That doesn't mean, in my opinion, you do not include females. You do want a Baroness. You do want a Scarlet. You do want a uh, Princess Leia. But what it means is you don't push all these females to be 50-50 with the men. And you don't put them in, in the lead role of a male property like Rey being the, ma the lead role in Star Wars. Because what is happening when they do this to Marvel and Star Wars is if you push a female character as the main hero, boys do not want that to play with. They want to play with a male action figure that they could fantasize as relating to them. And, and you notice they push these women on male properties like Star Wars, like Marvel. And the girls don't want these masculine like females in these roles. The girls want Barbie. They want feminine stuff. That's what appeals to them toy-wise and historically in terms of store, in terms of merchandise. That is what is appealing to them. They want to play with like ponies and they want to play with the, the girl, like the play sets, stuff like that. They don't want a superhero, a Black Widow, little girls. They don't want a Ray Skywalker. They want stuff that is girly. 
and the boys want stuff that is manly. This is the way it's been, okay? Since the toy industry probably started, people. And people like to say we have more than two genders or, or that we have more than uh, gender fluidity. All of that is garbage. Let's be honest. All of that is garbage. You have men, you have women. You have boys and you have girls. You only have two genders. None of this other BS. Don't fool yourself. Don't get into this social justice crap and believe what the media is telling you. You have two genders and boys like manly stuff to inspire them. They don't want a Ray Skywalker. They don't want a Black Widow as their hero. And girls do not want Ray Skywalker. They don't want this manly stuff, females. They want girly stuff. They want Barbie. They want play sets. This is the way it is. This is the way what sells. And this woke stuff does not sell. Like the article said, these new Disney Plus characters, this new stuff they're pushing, it's not selling. And if you want 50% representation for females, if you want 50% representation for, for Shang-Chi, Eternals, and all of these third tier characters, they're not going to sell. Is that true for every boy and girl? No. But when it comes to trends and generally speaking, it is the truth. And you know it. And they said, you know, here, it's an attempt to manipulate the market. That they want you to ship Eternals with the popular brands like Captain America or Iron Man. But the manufacturer doesn't want to produce a line that sees abysmal returns. Just because it says it's Marvel doesn't mean it's going to sell. It's like, do I have to tell you that Spider-Man is a better merchandise driver than Doctor Strange? And that Doctor Strange is a better merchandise driver than the Falcon? Who, and the Falcon sells better than Moon Knight? All this essentially confirms what we've been seeing on clearance aisles and common sense. It says here, it, let's just have an, uh, an absurd example. You know, when Agatha Harkness show was out, you know, they're going to start trying to push merchandise for that, right? So let's say you hold the license right contract, but you're stuck printing Agatha Harkness stickers in equal measure to Spider-Man. That would make, and Spider-Man would make you 90% more money. You can begin to see how this starts out bad in terms of math for people who just want to sell toys. And that's the bottom line, okay? Now the article's over. I know it was a long read, so thanks for sticking around. And, you know, I, I mixed my opinion with the two articles. And I just thought, I didn't want to make a post on it. I want to talk on it because as a toy buyer, and you're probably a toy buyer watching this channel, we like the Marvel stuff. We like the, the Marvel merchandise, the, the Marvel Legends especially, the the toy shirts, etc. And I had no idea this was going on, people. So if you're putting out 10 toys and four or five of them are not making money and five of them are making money, you can't get rid of the four or five that are not making money because Marvel is not letting you get rid of those four or five. They're saying you have to publish it. And the same thing is with Star Wars. They're pushing these new characters and they're not selling. And let's be honest, you know, it has turned out true when it comes to Star Wars. You notice they don't push any Disney trilogy movie figures anymore. You get almost none. Those movies were crap. And you notice they don't push any of those figures. They didn't make any more Knights of Ren figures. They didn't complete the team. The Rise of Skywalker, you barely got any figures other than a wave or two. You barely got any merchandise. And yet, the Star Wars focus, in terms of Hasbro, is guess what? It's the original trilogy. It's the prequel stuff that aged better with time. They, 
they're making the Mando figures and the stuff on the Disney Plus, the new series. Why did the Reva HasLab project utterly fail? Just like her action figure will be easy to find on the shelf. You don't got to pre-order that one. It's not going to sell out. It's the truth. McFarlane has said the female action figures don't sell. The Disney stuff here has the insider. They do not sell. The boys want to play with the, the boy stuff. And the girls want to play with Barbie and dolls and that type of stuff. And that's just the way it is. Now does that mean no girl action figures sell? No. But it means it could be like 8 to 1 sales. 20 to 1. So you do want some females in there. You want that Scarlet. Like I said, you want the Baroness. But how many other G.I. Joe figures are males? You want to diversify it. You do want to put the female figures there. But I'm talking, generally speaking, they don't sell well. McFarlane told you, and he got some heat for that, but he spoke the truth. The Disney stuff here, it's proof. You think Ray Skywalker sold? She didn't. You think Reva's going to sell? She will not. So this push. Remember this, what was it? Tala? Was it Talia? Got an action figure from Obi-Wan Kenobi. In her officer uniform. I bet that's one of the lowest selling Kenobi action figures in the entire wave. It's just my prediction, okay? You think, again, who's going to sell more? The Grand Inquisitor? The Fifth Brother? Obi-Wan Kenobi? Or Tala? I think the answer is pretty obvious, okay? Who's going to outsell 8 to 1? Those guys? Maybe 20 to 1? Who do you think is going to sell for DC outside of Wonder Woman, okay? If McFarlane makes Batman and Superman and Green Lantern, and then he makes the female Green Lantern, guess who's not going to sell as good as the other ones? The female Green Lantern. That's just the way it is. But it was a fascinating reveal to wrap up this long post that... Going woke and pushing these lesser tier characters that Disney is doing and pushing the female characters for representation, it's not selling and the merchandise sales are down and that's just the truth. You accept it or you don't. It's not opinion, it's fact, okay? The numbers prove the truth. You don't have to like it, but that's the way it is. But also, you know, it's like the truth. If you go woke, you go broke. And I'll tell you right now, those two or three females that they're pushing on the Black Panther film, they'll probably be the lowest selling action figures in that entire wave. So it has two things going against it. Number one, the general public doesn't like this new stuff. It has no interest in heroes outside of the main heroes. It said Spider-Man sold the best, Captain America, uh, Iron Man, even the Hulk and Thor. Y you think those two females and Black Panther are going to sell as good as, as Spider-Man and those guys? They won't, okay? So number one, you have lesser tier characters that are not popular with the general public. And number two, they're females. It's right there, okay? And that's just being truthful. You were selling toys, okay? And you're being honest. Would you sell Hulks, Captain America's, Iron Man, Spider Man, Wolverine, The Punisher, and then would you sell two movie MCU females who the public barely knows about? Like, yeah, guess who's not gonna make you make you a lot of sales money? Guess who's gonna sell the lowest? It's pretty obvious, okay? That's just, that's just the way it is. You don't have to accept it, but that's the truth. And it's a perfect example by Marvel and by Disney pushing this, by going woke. Everyone's going broke. But you want to know what the best part of this is? 
in my opinion, and to close out the video is, you know, as me as a collector, and as you as a collector, if you're watching this, who buys toys, who buys Marvel stuff, we do not have to put woke action figures in our collection. You know, they could push this stuff in movies and in TV shows. And we have no say. You, me, we have no say in terms of the content. If they want to make it, we, we can't do anything to change to change it, okay? But when it but toys are our personal collection. And again, if they want to put it in comic books, you have no choice. You could only choose not to buy the comic book. But you have no choice in terms of what they put in the comic book. But toys are a different agenda. Because toys are our collection. We choose what to put in our collection. And if we don't want Eternals toys, if we don't want a Kamala Khan we don't buy it. Or if you had to buy it for the Builder figure part, you sell the action figure. Even if you lose money, you sell it. Or you buy the Builder figure part solo. You just get rid of the figure. And that's the way it is, you know. That's just the truth, I think, personally, as a collector. And think about your collection. That if you have no interest in a figure, an MCU movie figure, uh, one of these social justice new characters. If you don't want them in your collection, you don't buy it. You don't give the company your money. You don't pick it up. You let it stay on the shelf. And I've seen stuff for even six bucks to ten bucks that were twenty dollars and I still refuse to buy it. Not because it's not cheap, it's because even at six bucks, I don't want it. This is where we, me and you, have the power. We have no say in movies. We have no say in TV shows or comic book content. But for toys that we buy, we determine what we want and what we don't want. If you want to buy 10 Batman figures, go ahead. If you want to buy 10 Iron Man figures, buy it. If you don't want any Kamala Khans in your collection, if you don't want any Shang-Chi figures in your collection, that's your choice, you know? And they can't do anything about it. They can't put it on sale. They can't discount it, with the exception of it being, like, extremely cheap or even free. Even then, you know, it's questionable. But, uh... You don't have to put these figures in your collection. You don't need it. You buy what you like, and what you don't like, you don't buy it, or you get rid of it. So, you know, and that's where we have the power, because they could produce it, and we could just let it sit on the shelf, because we determine what we want in our collection, not them. They can't do anything. Their stuff will sit with no buyers. That's the way I feel, you know? We buy what we like and what we don't like. Just don't pick it up. That's how it is. A long talk, a long post here. Uh, and for sticking around here. If you like it, let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe, my friends, and I will talk to you later.